Let's talk about the histologic features of primary biliary cholangitis. As you probably realize by now, looking at a liver biopsy without any clinical history is a losing proposition. When it comes to PBC, or primary biliary cholangitis, in most cases, the hepatologists have a very good notion that they're dealing with PBC. It seldom comes as a complete surprise to a hepatologist. So when I get a biopsy with somebody with PBC, often it'll say, rule out PBC. And the first thing I do is to look at some basic demographic data. And to make a diagnosis of PBC, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a woman in her 50s, female, of course. I'm looking for an increased alkaline phosphatase. It may be mild, and some of these patients are completely asymptomatic. And then finally, most importantly, I'm looking for a positive AMA or anti-mitochondrial antibody. Now, AMA is a great assay for PBC. Is it perfect? Probably not, but it is as close to perfect as a serological marker can get. Greater than 95% of patients with PBC have a positive AMA, which means that there is a small group of patients that are AMA negative. But before you make a diagnosis of an AMA negative PBC on histologic grounds, you better be absolutely sure that you're seeing classic histologic features and all of the other clinical features match. So that's enough about the clinical picture. You're here to listen to the histologic features of PBC. So let's go. So there are a couple of things about PBC on very low power. One, this is a portal-based process. So all of these blue nodules are expanded and inflamed portal tracts. Two, if you look between the portal tracts, the liver looks quite okay. It looks all pink. There's little blue to be seen. Now, you can have lobular activity in PBC, but it is less common. The primary damage is in the portal tract. And three, the disease can be awfully patchy. So you'll notice on this call, there's a significant amount of inflammation. Most portal tracts are involved. But if you look at the adjacent core, there's perhaps just one portal tract that is involved. So patchiness is a problem sometimes in PBC. So the two things that you're looking for when you start looking at the portal tracts is inflammation and bile duct damage. And this is a very obviously inflamed portal tract. And there's the bile duct. The inflammatory cells are lymphocytes, but there's a ton of plasma cells. So plasma cells, when you hear plasma cells, you'll often think autoimmune hepatitis. The other thing to think of is primary biliary cholangitis. It tends to be very dense, but notice here that there's a very damaged bile duct. Now a classic normal bile duct should be round with evenly spaced nuclei. Damaged bile ducts take all sorts of patterns, and this is one pattern of a damaged bile duct. One is the shape is not round, which is abnormal, and two, they require this very eosinophilic cytoplasm. That is evidence of damage. The third feature is you'll see intraepithelial lymphocytes in here. This is the classic bile duct damage in PBC, and this is referred to as a florid duct lesion. So what is a florid duct lesion? It's a duct that is damaged and centered around it, in this case it's somewhat eccentric, is a loose aggregate of histiocytes. Now this actually turns out to be a fairly compact aggregate of histiocytes. This looks like a granuloma. So often in PBC you get loose aggregates of histiocytes around the bile duct, the florid duct lesion, but you can see fairly compact histiocytes as well and you may see these histiocytic aggregates in the lobule. But I wanted to draw your attention to what is happening at the interface between the portal tract and the adjacent liver. Notice that the lymphocytes and plasma cells are infiltrating into the adjacent liver. And this looks like interface hepatitis. And when you hear the term interface hepatitis, you're thinking autoimmune hepatitis. You're thinking viral hepatitis. The message that I want to deliver to you right now is that you can see interface hepatitis in PBC. This is sometimes referred to as biliary type interface hepatitis. Unlike autoimmune hepatitis, you see very little cell death. You see very few apoptotic hepatocytes at that interface. There's a somewhat damaged bile duct 
up there. Let's take a closer look at that duct. And here's the that damaged bile duct front and center. Here's another form of bile duct damage. And this time it takes the form of vacuolization of those epithelial cells. Again, notice that they are intra-epithelial lymphocytes in there. And one final form of bile duct damage. Here are two bile ducts that look extensively damaged. Notice also the marked portal inf infiltrate and the significant interface hepatitis. Here's the bile duct. It's barely recognizable, isn't it? It's just, it's exploded literally. There's a couple of histiocytes around the bile duct. So this is looking to like a florid duct lesion. But what is interesting in this case, that these cells are accompanied by neutrophils. Now it is uncommon to see neutrophils in PBC, but this case was AMA positive, had all of the other classic features of PBC and therefore I accepted neutrophils as a part of the histologic spectrum of PBC. Now there's a really cool thing you can do with a PAS diastase stain, and that is look for the basement membrane around the bile duct. Now there's a bile ductule, and you can see that subtle basement membrane up there, but look at these two bile ducts. They, they suffer significant damage, and there's complete loss of that basement membrane on the PAS diastase stain. And you can see that same phenomenon on a keratin 7 or a keratin 19 stain. You'll see all these negative images on this keratin 7 stain. And that is because that bile duct has been infiltrated by neutrophils. So I often find a PAS diastase or a keratin 7 or keratin 19 stain extremely helpful. This is again a keratin 7 stain. Look at the periportal hepatocytes here the bile ductules out there and a keratin 7 or a keratin 19 stain is often helpful in identifying residual bile ducts and assessing for paucity of bile ducts. So in the late phase of PBC you will start losing bile ducts. All right so what happens in the lobules in PBC? Often very little. All of the action like I said is in the portal tract but not uncommonly you will find some inflammation within the lobule as you see here. Unlike viral hepatitis or autoimmune hepatitis, you will not find a lot of hepatocellular death in PBC.